one. Welcome to Soccer As We Like It, the Man United direction. Today we have UK and USA fans. We have from the Houston Red Army, USA. We have Bems. We have Joel from UK. We have Kaz from Red Flex. And we have Richard from Manchester. Right. As we have known, as you can see, uh, United are five points behind Manchester City and City have a game in hand. As it stands, as we've all seen championship titles won and lost at this stage, is it over for United or can it still happen for United after the draw against Everton? I'm going to let Kaz open up for us. I think the most sensible answer would probably be, be to say that we're out of the title race. However, it's been a long, long time since we've been in this title race seven years so me personally i'm enjoying the race still being in the mix i wouldn't rule ourselves out just yet fair enough man city have won what i think it's 15 games in a row something crazy like that but they will slip up and it's just whether or not we can capitalize and i firmly believe west brom is the game where we can get our title race uh, back on track right richard jump in there is it over? Can it still happen? Or after the Everton game and Sheffield United, it's good man, good night? It never was was there to start off with, you know. I, I two weeks ago I, I said it. Two weeks ago I said it that we're not going to be in the race. People thought I was being negative, um, but when the going gets tough, when 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 we're under pressure, we seem to collapse. Um, and this is a common thing under this manager. Um, so I don't think that we're going to win it. I think it's City's title to lose. Um, and the defence is a problem, right? You know, you, you've got Captain Harold, um, as, as I call him, Harold Maguire, who is slower than an elephant running through sand. He's not good <laughs> enough. He's, he's the leader of the club, right? And yeah. I don't think he's good enough. £80 million pounds of the Queen's sterling that we've paid and I think this is the biggest robbery and, and, and Leicester City need to go on trial for this crime. Um, and we, 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 we're not going to see high places with this guy in, in, uh, as our main defender. I'm sorry. People say Lindelof is bad, but you have to look at the captain. Harry Maguire, four re relegations, seven bottled semifinals and um, countless other unwanted records on, on his uh, illustrious CV. So no, we're not going to win. All right, Joe, Houston Red Army. Joe, what's your take on the situation currently now? I mean, I don't know. I look at it like this, right? Last season around this time, right? We would have made the same uh, um, decisions that, that a lot of fans are doing right now and saying that we weren't going to make the top four. I mean, the, the, the feet that we have to uh, um, achieve between now and the end of the season is far easier than making top four last season. Oh, that yeah. incredible run that we went through, like all we really need is that we just really need like half of that, you know? And I feel like the team is getting there mentally. Yeah, we're not all there. We still have some pieces that we have to take care of, right? As far as like the man management situation with the center backs, that's, that's, that's all on Ole because I think Ole is the type of manager that he doesn't take people in and out depending on form. Like he gives people an opportunity again to lose their position. And Lindelof prior to the game against Everton had been playing pretty decent. So he wasn't going to lose that position to Eric Bailly. It's just not going to happen. That said, you're not going to, I mean, saying that Harry Maguire costs this much money, Harry Maguire is not like, if your boss decides to pay you 30,000 or 60,000 more pounds for what you're doing right now. Are you going to reject it because you don't feel like you're going to be able to be worth that much? Or are you going to be like, like, it's not his fault he's worth that much money. Manchester United decided to pay him that, for that much money, right? That said, yeah, he's not, he's not Van Dyke, but I think him and maybe Eric Bailly, or if we decide to get another center back would drastically improve us moving forward after the summer. But the season is definitely not over at all. I am still uh, uh, optimistic about this team. And this isn't even on like, oh, if City loses this. But like City, I know they're in a great form right now. But the idea that this City team is going to go 
the rest of the season without losing or dropping points. I mean, that's that's just there's way too much uh, game, uh, way too much season uh, left for us. So I'm still optimistic that we could actually pull it off. We, as a matter of fact, have done the opposite in the Prem, where we had the points that we had the advantage like City did, and we still lost it. So, I mean, it's not set in stone that we're not going to win the league this season. All right. Bems. Okay. Um, I'm on the same path as Richard. We were never in no title race, man. Um, fans that think, oh, yeah, win a title, I think that's just an emotional ride that you guys are on. I'm more of a realist. Um, in my opinion, we were never in one. Um, it was nice to see the ride. It was nice to see the highs, man. It was some nice highs, but it was um, it was quite brief. Um, as, uh, <laughs> quite brief. As, as Richard said, we, we bottled it when we're under pressure, and that's what we did against Everton. Um, I, had actually, I actually had a bet with Joe a couple of weeks ago. It's coming. Um, this was um, this was right before Man City played Crystal Palace. It was when they were playing Crystal Palace. Man City beat Crystal Palace four 0 and I said, I said, Joe, Man City is not going to drop any points. They're not going to drop any points till they play Liverpool. They could possibly drop against Liverpool, but I don't see them dropping any points. They play, they play Liverpool. They haven't dropped since. And I said, for us to even to even try to even show that we can challenge as Man City gained those points, we would have to gain the same amount of points too. We can't drop. And guess what? We lost to Sheffield United. We drew to Everton. Bro, there's some more drop points coming through for us. So at the rate, it's like, you, 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 you just look at it. Look at United versus City. City, have, you have a better manager, better players, better system. They've won the league two times before since we've, we haven't won it in eight years. And you have a team that's showing, okay, they're improving, but they still don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. They're somehow in some imaginary title race. But each time you've seen in the past, each time they come under the pressure, they bubble it. So I don't know how we can say that United are ready to, to do anything this season. I mean, you can clearly see it. And so for every point, for all the three points that City makes, they, they get, we have to keep doing that. And we haven't been able to do that. And I'm sorry, this gap is going to even widen up when it gets to March because you talking about Champions League games, talking about Europa League games. I mean, you, I mean, you're playing every three, pretty much every three days. Pogba's out for six weeks. You're going to get some more injuries. All they didn't get is uh, – um, is, is a um, center back signing. Ole didn't, Ole didn't get any of his first choice signings this past summer. So, I mean, I, I just don't see it. In my opinion, we're not in the title race. We have never have been. In my opinion, I, I think it's going to be, I, I don't see us even winning a, a, um, a trophy. I think our best bet is top four. Wow. All right, Ben, uh, I was uh, getting very concerned there, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Cast. Um, <laughs> That Everton game, was it as bad as the Sheffield United defeat or was they were literally just as bad as each other? I think in the heat of the moment, the Everton game felt... It was a gut wrench of the Everton game. It felt a lot worse than the Sheffield United. For me personally, with the Sheffield United game, yeah, with the narrative, you know, bottom club in the Premier League, we, we lose to them at Old Trafford. And I get it, you know, there's a circus, the media have got a field day that, you know, Man United have lost the bottom table or bottom club. But in that game, I didn't think our performance was that good. I thought Sheffield United deserved some credit in terms of how they limited us in playing because they knew that when you have people like Martial and Rashford, they're more players that want to run into space. And as long as you have a low block, we always struggle. But with the Everton game, the reason why it hurt a lot more for me is because I thought that was probably one of our better performances at Old Trafford. Yeah. In, in terms of actual performance, in terms of how we were uh, with the ball, how we were off the ball, we were pressurising, you know, from the front, we were moving it quick. And at 2-0 at halftime, I was thinking, what thumbnail do I need to get ready? What's the timeline <laughs> going to be on the video? Um, you know, what photos do I need to get ready for, you know, when the reactions are going up? 
And I mean, don't get me wrong, we were lucky that it wasn't 2 1 at half time because Calvert Lewin had a one on one that he missed. I think a lot of people forget that. But I wasn't never expecting what I saw. It was literally as if Everton had transformed into Pep Guardiola's Barcelona uh, for five minutes. And they absolutely dominated us. The goals themselves, they were soft goals. But Dark realistically, player. if Manchester United want to be where we think they should be, then these kind of results, they can never happen, especially in our Old Trafford. Obviously, our performance at Old Trafford have been average, to say the least. But I think if there was any game, obviously, when you asked me the question, do I think we're in a title race? Yeah, I, I would agree. More emotion is driving the fact that I will never give up in terms of the title race until it's mathematically possible, you know, impossible. But the game that proved to me that we're not just quite there is the game against Everton because if you're looking to win things, if you're looking to you know, be the best in the Premier League, you do not draw that game against Everton 3-3. So, yeah, to summarise my answer, yes, absolutely. That game hurts and it still hurts. And I thought watching the game following that would ease some of that pain, but it hasn't. And it was a turning point, definitely, uh, for this season. Thanks, Kaz. Chris, thank you for joining us. Chris, Chris is from UK. Chris, you've met most of Houston Red Army. Kaz is joining us for the first time. He's the host of the Red Flex YouTube channel, Man United channel. So, Chris, Flex, Flex, Flex meet Chris. Chris, That's we're just me, talking Chris. about, was is the title over? Can United surprisingly catch City? Or can City just collapse and United could win the title? Uh, I think the thing is, I, to me, I don't think. Okay, if you look at the table now, it does tell you that Man United are in a title challenge. But to me, I don't think they were ever genuine contenders for the title. I've had a, I've had a lot of reservations about Solskjaer from the beginning, as everybody, most of the guys here would know. Uh, I just don't think he's the lead coach that Man United require in order to get them to to the high status that where they should be. And what we, if we allude to the Everton game, I went downstairs to get my food, came upstairs, and it was 2-2 as I was, I started eating. And then he choked my food. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, it was, that's just, that was just shocking. And the ending, the way in which the game ended, Man United have had problems on set pieces throughout the whole season. This has not been addressed. It keeps happening time and time again. Look at the, the West Ham game recently. They could have conceded a goal in the last minute there. They had, West Ham had a chance. They were very, very fortunate. To me, it, it, it's things like that. When, when, you, when you see that repeating itself, it's telling you that these guys are not, they're not being coached properly in terms of the set pieces. They, they, it's not something that they're working on, the defensive side of the game. And it's important because if you look at all title winners, they don't concede those kind of goals. It's very, very rare that they concede those kind of goals. And then there's other things like the in-game management, what are the tactics on the pitch, Man the fact that Man United, even right now, they still don't have a defined style of play. They still don't have a defined style of play. I don't know what Man United's style of play right now is. They have a lot of, they have special players in the team, which is what's put them up there in the table. To me, it's not, it, it isn't anything to do with the coaching. It's more to do with the individual talents that they have in the squad. And how long can this continue for? I, I, I'm actually a little bit worried that they might not make top four because Chelsea have just recruited um, the, the German coach. I've forgotten his name, Tuchel. So I believe Chelsea will make top four, but I'm a little bit worried about Man United make top, top four now. Oh, wow. Wait. Okay, uh, uh, Richard, let me take My you back to um, uh, what uh, uh, Kaz said. The Everton game, the goals we conceded, how bad was the impact of that game? Was it worse than the Sheffield United game or it was just a typical United game, the Everton match? Yeah, good question. So for me, it was worse than Sheffield United, right? Um, Sheffield United was, for me, like a freak game. It was a one-off. You know, the Premier League is very difficult. You can you can lose these kind of games. But I think with the Everton game, most of most of the match we were in control. But to to concede the goal the way how we did in the last few seconds of the game was very gut wrenching. It was very painful. Um and that kind of 
solidified my belief that we're not ready to win the title because we don't have it in us to see see it through difficult situations. You know, when when we're under the serious pressure, when the going gets tough, it's when we start crumbling. Um, and I do think that this is a coaching issue. Um, you know, I, I don't like to to go in on, on players, but I wasn't happy with Maguire uh, the last minute of the game playing. You know, that Ever- Everton on side, I, I wasn't happy with that. Um, Again, De Gea made the mistake for the last, you know, the last goal as well. He wasn't commanding in his box. I was, I was very unhappy. But this is a coaching thing, you know. It's been happening time and time again. Um, and I, I, I just think that there's a mentality that reeks of mediocrity. So we I think it seems like we're just happy to be, uh, you know, number two at the moment. You know, we're just happy to be so high up the table because. In Ollie's words, you know, nobody expected us to be there. And this is this, this is a coaching issue. You know, at the end of the game, Ollie said, you know, we were never title contenders. At the start of the season, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer said that he wants to be the best out of a chasing pack behind um, Liverpool and Man City. He wants to be the best out of, out of the chasing pack behind Liverpool and Manchester City. Listen to what I just said. Basically, he wants to come third. That's his aim. So if he's saying that in public, I, I just don't think that he's he really believes himself that he's going to win the league. He knows he's not good enough, but he feels maybe I'm over, overachieving and he's just happy to be in the job. This is the vibe that I get with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and it's not good enough for a club at this level. Um, we need a top-tier coach that can take us through these difficult periods, you know, periods where we are chasing something, you know, we are in the semi-final and it's the last minute to go. A top coach who has good in-game management that can see us through to the final and then eventually see us through to winning a trophy. I don't see this, I don't see this happening with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. His record speaks for itself, you know. Let me ask you a question, right? You needed brain surgery, right? Would you, would, would you want to uh, recruit a doctor that has a history of failure or recruit a doctor that has a history of success. I know which one I would rather choose. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, if you look at his CV, I talk about CVs a lot. He's got a history of failure. It's not coincidental that at the key stages, at the crucial stages, we keep on messing up time and time again. It's down to the coach. I'm sorry. Can I, can I mention something about that? Yeah, Joe, go in there about this Everton. The Everton, how, how important was that game? Well, as far as the, the doctor analogy, just real quick. Um, yes, Ole may not necessarily have been the doctor that has a history, but we, if, if you, you're you using that same analogy, it would be as if you already went to two doctors that had a history of winning, that had one big, uh, won the league and won the Champions League, and they weren't able to fix you. But now you go to this guy, he he may not be at the big hospital, He's not he may not be from the big hospital, but He's this guy that worked at a clinic. And even though you went to go see him, but, right? But no, you no, started no. to see no, incremental. Joe, Joe, Joe. 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 I want to know where this is going. Is going. Clinic, Doctor, oh my God, that is too much. You're not going to, well, regardless wait, of that, wait, you're wait, not wait, wait, going to keep looking this, for this. Wait a minute. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, you guys are like, we need a manager that has a history of winning. Well, we already did that with Ben Howe and Jose Mourinho. It didn't work out. But out of out of all the managers that we've had, right? Now I'm not. I think a lot of times people get it confused. You know what the answer to that, this thing is? Oh, 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 I think people confuse their expectation of where the team needs to be and what the team can achieve this season. The team can achieve some some minor things this season without necessarily you put in rubber stamping this team as the team that's going to be the future of Manchester United and it's going to bring us back to glory. Obviously, there are glaring uh, issues that we have to take care of. All these in-game management, the centre-back situation, right wing. We all are aware of this, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to, they, they don't have, they're not in the conversation of uh, um, achieving something this season. The Everton game, yes, that sucked. That was bad. That was terrible. That was bad by Maguire. Um, 
I looked at it again. You have to look at it again. I think you guys, the De Gea, hey, I, I get it. I get it. But you guys are expecting this guy to, to go from zero to 60. Like, if you look at his position during the game, remember the game was forwarded by McTominay. It was headed into the uh, um, um, Calvin Lewin's uh, uh, position by Scott McTominay. And that was done at the top of the at, at the top of the, uh, the the box, like what was De Gea? I mean, just look just look at the replay. You'll see it wasn't like that. You guys are just expecting De Gea to just all of a sudden become this guy that just clatters uh, defenders left to right. He never was that guy. He never will be that guy. We need to get a, a we need, and he only we need a better center back on um, um, duo in the front to make sure. That that's that's not a question anymore. That, that's just how I feel about that. I'm, I have one more question to ask you. Okay, uh, in yeah, response quickly. to what you just said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very quick. Okay, no. you said that um, the the two world class coaches didn't work, right? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You go to a restaurant, yeah. You go to two restaurants and they serve bad food, right? Yeah. Does that does that mean that you're going to be eating trash from the back of Walmart because you've had a bad experience in 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 in, yeah. in two good restaurant in, in two restaurants with good reputations, or are you going to go to another good restaurant? This is what oh, I'm trying see, to say. Okay, no, no, no. You're you're absolutely right, right? You just went to two very nice restaurants. You didn't like the food, but now you're saying that you only go to nice restaurants. You you, you have never had good food from a hole in the wall. Is that what you're saying? You've That's never cool. you've you've never had good food from a restaurant that was not a five star restaurant. You're saying that the only way we can eat well is to go to five-star restaurants, and that's just not the case. Uh, a lot of the best quality. places that I've eaten are hole in the walls. Go. No, if you want, if, <laughs> if you right. want quality, Bams. you gotta go. Bams, step in there. Five Everton restaurant. getting quickly. Oh man, um, yeah. I, I mean, I second what everyone said. That game was just. Um, I mean, we were up two 0 by. Yeah, we're up two 0 by halftime. Yeah. The first, I was like, sending out the celebration videos already. I, I, I'm telling you, man. I was like, okay, this game's done and dusted. Let me go pour me some to drink. I don't know why any of you guys did that. Today. And <laughs> I, mean, five minutes I did it. I mean, I mean, and then five minutes in the second half, okay, 2 1. I mean, they scored two goals within six minutes, I think. Yeah, that was too quick. I was like, God damn, are you kidding me? And this is the team that. Everyone's saying, oh, yeah, 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 we're going to win the league. <laughs> In the back of my house, like, oh, man, here we go again. It's going to happen again, just like they always do, but all under pressure. And then we go and score, make it 3-2, and then yeah. the last second of the game, this is not the first time this is happening. I mean, there are a lot of games where we could have, and I've been saying this to Joe, and uh, like, we don't win we don't win teams convincingly. We mm. don't, like, I mean, we were pretty much winning the game convincingly, then we just mess it up. That's what United are. We've been that way. And then the last second of the game, Maguire plays, plays everything on side. You are the leader of that team. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? For the first, for the first goal that everything, um, everything scored, Maguire just looks like he's a freaking turtle. He, 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 cannot, he cannot keep pace with, with uh, I think it was Calvert Lewin. Just, just look at that pass to Calvin Lewin. It split the defense. Just like, wow. It's just like, this is like that is that is schoolboy defending. You can't. You don't defend like that. Like I know Maguire doesn't have the pace, but come on, come on. It, it's just it's ridiculous. That, that defense is 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 pretty much shambles. As they said, offense wins you games. Defense wins you, wins you trophies. Well, this defense is not good enough to win a trophy right now. Um, it's yeah, the Everton game, it just it hurts, man. It hurts. It just even though in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, we're not ready, but you kind of hope, like when you see the team play, you're like, man, okay, I, yeah, something's gonna happen. But it just right. it just brings you down back to earth. So yeah. Right, because when, when we watched that game at 2 0, I was actually so excited that like, this game is done and dusted. I was expecting more goals, like because. Pogba left when we're leading 2 0, was it? Yeah, at 2 0, right? We were yeah, leading 2 0. Yeah. Right. He, he was playing mm-hmm. well. So okay. when he now got injured, when we went into the second half, like you said, Everton nearly made it 2 1, but he missed by an, a few inches because he was 1 on 1. 
That yeah, was yeah. a warning because yeah. he literally split the defense in mm -hmm. an inch. Then second half comes in. I don't know what was said. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the changes. Then two one two two. I'm thinking, what the hell? Then we go free to Africa. They're gonna. They have to shut this game down. Yeah. But when that, when they had that free kick, I know every United fan was scared because of that set. It's like, oh, here we go again. And when the ball went in, everyone just sank because we were on the pub watching. Like you could just see her just like, what? And I think that goal just drained any chance of like catching trying to be up there with Man City. Okay, forget Sheffield United. That goal, it just mentally just drained me mentally. I like, I couldn't, for a couple of days, like, what? How? It, 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 it hurt. So now is, so most of you have said the title is done. We can't care. Do you guys see City even collapsing at all? Kaz? Man. I think right now you'd probably say no, but look, at the end of the day, what, has there been eight teams, nine teams that have led the Premier League this season? It's a very special season. Right. I would have to painfully agree that Man City look very strong. I watched the Liverpool City game and although I knew, I, I knew that Man City had to drop points as I, as I, you know, I had my Man United hat on, but I still enjoyed the game because Liverpool took a, you know, a right seam to but that's a separate story. <laughs> I was, you know, I was so impressed with City, their defensive shape, the way they were attacking. You know, don't forget they're without two of their best players, Sergio Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne. So right now, if somebody was to turn and say, no, I still think, you know, they're going to drop points, you might look foolish. But, you know, never say never because we don't know. It's, it's a funny season. And I think as long as it doesn't get into, you know, double figures in terms of the lead. Right. You know, the next two games are going to be crucial because City have got Tottenham on Saturday. I know, you know, right now you wouldn't say, you wouldn't bet Tottenham to get anything at the Etihad, but then they go away to Arsenal. So, again, City normally win at the Emirates. I know that. But the two games that City could easily drop points, we've got West Brom and we've got Newcastle. Two very winnable games. Yeah, we lost to Sheffield United. We dropped points to Everton. But this season can change in a matter of a few games. So I think it's still safe to say that we are still in this title race. Okay. Chris, City collapsing. I mean, teams have collapsed in the past. I mean, United collapsed in 98, leading Arsenal with 12 points. And Arsenal caught us up. But... Those football has changed. Can City collapse? Um, I, I don't see it. It's very, very unlikely. Um, I think it's, it, quite, it says a lot that they're able to cope without two of their most influential players. It really does say, say a lot about um, in terms of the, the, the coach that they have there. I think if Man United didn't have the... They, they didn't have... Um, the Bruno. <laughs> Fernandez, they'll really be struggling. Wow. They'll really be struggling. Uh, going back to the um to the, the Everton game, I think I just wanted to mention this. Isn't it quite in, is wasn't it? I don't know about what you guys thought. I thought it was extremely negative to bring on uh, Twan Zebi. I, I thought, thought that so was yeah, that was I so agree. negative. And the thing is that's that's one of the things that, that indicated to you that I the in terms of Social's coaching ability, it tells you it's very limited because a top coach will not make that kind of a change. Seriously, I mean, it, it, it was so I think poor. It was wasting time. I think the main reason for the What's substitution was to waste time. Yeah, to waste time. Yeah, I, I, I do get that, but would man really to bring on the defender? For, uh, I mean, he came, no, he came, but he but he came on in the 93rd minute. Yeah, but the referee added the game all was that, over. that time to the clock, though. But he still yeah, had the, the time we wasted was now added on. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that substitution was the reason why we lost that game. The, no, the, no, the no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't. I just, but, but this, this is just a, com it's a culmination of all these. Um, it's the in-game management, the the strange substitutions. It was, we saw it there in the Everton game. But in terms of going forward for the season, I. No, I can't. I can't see City 
collapse. It's pretty tired to lose. To lose, it really is. I think the next two games, it's it, it's really going to tell us everything about Manchester United. Um, with the West Brom game, you would think that they'll win it, but I'm I'm not so sure that they're going to win it. Wow. I, I've, 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 I've a funny feeling Big Sam is going to be up to his old tricks again. I'm really I'm concerned about the next two games. To be honest with you. Wow, I really am. Right. Richard, City collapse. I don't see it happening. To be honest, um, I think historically they've got a coach that knows how to to win the league. He he knows how to you know close out seasons. Um, so I just think they'll go from strength to strength. I do I do think that they'll drop points. I don't think they're at full strength this season, so that can certainly help. You're right. um, but I, I think they'll win it. I think they'll win it comfortably. And um, it's just, it's a shame because this year was a good opportunity for us to, to actually yes. win the league because yes. Liverpool are suffering exactly. at the moment. Uh, Manchester City are not at full strength. I think what's changed about Manchester City this year is their, their defence. Um, so if you look at their defender, Ruben Diaz, um, I think how much did he cost? Someone, oh, someone, someone oh, 50 million, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's he's transformed their defence. Um, and now City are looking very, very solid at the back. So because of their defensive structure and, you know, they're naturally good at attack, I don't see them really slipping up wow. for the rest of the season, unfortunately. Joe, City collapse? I wouldn't say it's a collapse. I mean, they're only one game ahead of us with uh, how many points? It's, it's not... It's it's not game no, 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 two games. Two games. Five points with a game in hand. Exactly. Five points with a game in hand. Game in hand. It's not two games in hand. So you're saying okay, so it's not. Yeah, five, sorry, it's not. It's not the five points. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's what Tim. What Tim said. Okay, so it's 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 one of those seasons, man. I'm I'm telling you that I'm again. I'm not saying that United are going to win the league. I'm just saying there's still a chance because to to think in a season like this, with, with all the different. Um, league leaders that we've had with all the different injuries and COVID. Like, COVID can take this whole, like, their whole uh, <laughs> game. Just completely, that would be nice. Like, that, in what other yeah, season cool could you just that's have, cool. like, five players just out of the lineup, just like that? Ruben Diaz, all of those guys, could just, like, it's that kind of season. So that's why you can't really, at this time, because we're too close to them, yes, they might end up winning the league, but I'm not giving them fools the league in February, bro. No, not going to happen. So, right. Bams, this city collapse? Well, you all know my answer, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know my answer, man. City's going to win the league. I, I don't know how you want to look at it. You can look at it left, right, center. You could, I mean, you can dream on it. You can, I, I don't know, you can drink on it. it it's going to happen. I mean, United, see, City, as you said, they're what? They're five points ahead of five us. Five points ahead and a game in hand. If they win the game, game in hand, hand. So, you, so so you might as well say they're probably eight points ahead of us because they're more likely going to win that game. Yeah, City can still drop points, but they're not going to drop enough points. We and need we're not going to win enough we need games. Three defeats or four well, draws. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to happen. It's not going to happen. You're looking at a team, as you said, uh, um, is in a team that has Ruben Diaz that's improved their defense. Defensively, they're strong. They, I mean, they've had how many clean sheets this season? Um, and they're scoring goals for fun, too. Without De Bruyne, without Aguero. I mean, do the math, man. It's, it's, uh, and they have a better coach. I mean, man, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know what else to say, man. Okay. If we, if we had a better manager, then probably, yes, we could, we could probably push up a little bit more. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's gone. They're going to take it. Okay, you, you know, you know, you see, a lot of fans, a lot of United fans are excited because most of them have never seen United lead the league table since Sir Alex, as in lead with weeks and weeks. Okay, fine. But because football is such a funny game and you just never know, all right, like we said, we've been a COVID environment, right? City are playing good football, right? But in just in, because United have been in title chases and have collapsed, and United have chased teams and they have collapsed. I mean, I remember 96, Newcastle leading United 15 points. They collapsed. But those were great teams. United used to go on 16-game run and catch up. But times have changed. Football has changed. I get it. 
So what fans are hoping on and believing on is if City collapse, will United be close enough to take that opportunity? Chris, this is where we end up. Hmm. <laughs> if City collapse, I mean, uh, we're, we're, all, uh, we're all wishing for dreams now, uh, for our dreams to come true. <laughs> that is where United fans are. We know um, they're a better team. We know that. So most United fans are hoping City collapse, injuries, suspension, whatever can be, make them fall. And will United be close enough to go past? Oh, well, again, I, I really don't see it. Um, I think for me, it, if, okay, let's say, if we're going to break it down, let's see for the next six games, half a dozen games. Let's see how things go then. But, I genuinely still, it's still a very slim chance. And I, again, I have my, my cons, I have my concerns about the next two games. And overall, you guys, you know my opinion on social. Uh, we, the, the reason my concerns in regards to the next two games are because these teams, they defend deep. They Newcastle now West Brom. Yeah, they, they, these, these teams, they don't open up. So my, Manchester United tend to have issues when they face Breaking those teams. So it, it's going to tell us a lot, but going forward, I really can't because if, if you look at a Man City, they have the wealth drilled unit at the moment. They, their defence is, as the guys have just said, their defence has really improved a lot. And unfortunately, uh, as a United fan, uh, it pities me to say, but it looks like the title is going to City. It really wow. does. Unfortunately, it did doesn't seem to be any other challenges at the moment. COVID is really, it's really uh, shaking things up to, to, a, to a level which none of us would have ever thought. So City, they're, they're on their own and nobody's really challenging them, unfortunately. And uh, I'm worried about Man United finishing top four right now. I'm being serious when I, when I say this. I really am. I'm really worried about them finishing top four because I think that going forward, as the season goes on, I think they're going to be dropping more point, more and more points. Wow. Yeah, All I right. do. I seriously do. Richard, any chance for them to sneak in there? You know, with everything we know about football, any possibility? No, well, um, no. I again, I'm going to stand firm here. If if City collapse, I don't see us taking advantage. Oh wow! And I can only. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to you know ruin everyone's mood here, but. <laughs> I'm only going by what I've seen under this coach. When when we've had the opportunities to reach semi-finals, sorry, finals, we've we've collapsed, right? So when the opportunity has been presented in front of us, we tend to just collapse. Last season, we almost didn't make the top four. When we had the opportunity to sew it up, you know, weeks in advance, we kept on collapsing when it was needed. Um and I just think it's a mentality issue with the squad at the moment. Um, you know, some players are not good enough. But again, you know, it's, uh, it's, like, it's like, you know, I, I keep on repeating the same thing. It's the coaching. The coaching is not good enough to see us take advantage of any potential Man City collapse. So, um, unfortunately, I don't, I, I can't see us, I can't see us um, capitalising if, if this was to be the case. Cast. So, of course, I agree with I agree with what everyone is saying in terms of everything would point towards City not collapsing. But just to put things in a little bit of context, you know, last season we finished, I believe it was thirty three points behind, you know, the eventual Premier League champions. Yeah, Liverpool. that was a huge gap. And if you think about it, in the beginning of this season. Yeah, I don't think anyone would say that we were going to be in the title race. True. As we're now, you know, close, of course, of course. Obviously, the first time I watched Man United was in 1995. So I've seen it. I've seen the highs and I've seen the lows. So, yeah, of course, we're going to get excited. But the context is, last season, we finished 33 points behind. When Oliver Gunnar Solskjaer took over Manchester United, yeah, I get that we've bottled it in terms of the semi-finals, but at least we're in a position to bottle it. Before, we were not even in the position to bottle it. We were nowhere near. Last season, 33 points off. 
We've got to semi-finals, and I believe that in order to be champions, it's all part of a development. You have to go through it together. And this team is a fairly new team, and we've seen lows, but before you become champions, you've got to see those lows. So the way I see it is this is all part of our development in terms of where we want to be. And I definitely think Solskjaer, yeah, fair enough, he is an experienced manager, but, but don't forget he won the Norwegian Championship with Molde, which was never done before. I get it, it's the Norwegian League and it might not mean anything. So he does have a track record of winning league titles, although, again, it's not a big, it's not a big championship. But... He's brought in the likes of Carrick. He's brought in the likes of Fletcher. Solskjaer doesn't really do the in-game management. I did a video on it not so long ago. It's actually a rotation basis. Michael Carrick, Kieran McKenna, they all rotate just to offer that different voice. But I think we're going in the right direction. Yeah, we love a title race. We're loving it, you know, the emotion, the narrative. But I think we're going in the right direction. I just need to ask one very quick question. I, I don't want to take up your time, Tim, but... When in, in, in the Champions League, right, um, with two games to go, um, we were top of that group, right? <laughs> we just needed one point, right? The, the opportunity Richard, was really, there. Richard, really? Really? Richard, no, no, really? I'm, I'm, you know, because sometimes a lot of fans <laughs> like to like to dream and have all these emotions, dream, dream, but like I just, let, let, let's, have, let's look at facts, right? Yeah. We had the opportunity to qualify from that group. One point we needed. Go, with one point. But, but the same thing happened again. So, look, I don't gamble, but if I was a betting man, you know, I, I, I would seriously place a bet that Man United will not win based on what I've seen in history with this coach. Wow. Vems, uh, collapsing, a chance to sneak in. <laughs> Chris, why are you laughing? <laughs> you already know my answer, man. I mean, I'm going to give it to you. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> It's not gonna happen, man. Let's be real, man. That's, I mean, yeah, we can go all the, I mean, we can go down, you know, we can all be happy and emotional and all that stuff. It's not gonna happen. And just as Richard said, thanks for bringing up that, um, that top of the group stage. People, because we're doing, because we are, people have forgotten we got booted out of Champions League. Because I thought about it today, like, people forgot we got knocked out there because of the league we're doing now. People are like, oh, okay, but. It's, we got kicked out because we just yeah. failed in the two games. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's forgotten just just like that. We needed one point in two games. Man, that is terrible, man. And uh, we all of a sudden with a manager and a team that bottled it in two games in what four semifinals, um, and we bottled on the pressure every single time. Like I, that, my question is, where do fans get? gets the belief that it's going to happen when historically for the past how many years you've seen it not happen so i just don't know where you guys see it because i don't what, see what fancy is hope and prayers okay. and belief okay, okay. yeah okay so so and what i like to tell fans is that of a it's team. okay to have hope but sometimes it's it's better to be real what do you see on the pitch yeah what you see it every freaking week it yeah, we see, we see corner kicks. We see corner kicks. We yeah, see it, step pieces. We're like, oh. yeah, but we're doing the same. We're doing the same thing. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of improvement from last season. Oh yeah. To be honest with you, I think the position that we are in is a make believe position. I think we are lucky to be second. Extremely lucky. Right. If you look at some of the points that we picked up that we weren't that we could have easily got uh, um, zero points or one point from. If you look at all the way back to the beginning of the season, the game against Brighton, we got a penalty in the last second of the game. Bruno Fernandez, I think, I think the first the first shot he missed, right? Uh, it was safe because the goalkeeper's uh, uh, um, foot, uh, um, I think one of his foot was off the line. Yeah, I think yeah. it got retaken. Yeah, yeah. they did retake. Yeah. So that was a lucky three points. Just just let you know, that's three points. And then um, there was a block, I think. Um, that, Everybody uh, yeah. and, uh, um, against Aston Villa, the last second of the game. Now that could have easily been one point. So I mean, and then we haven't been winning teams convincingly. You guys got to look at the facts, man. Look mm -hmm. at just look at it. It's in your. It's in. I mean, you can. We go can see it, but we don't want to yeah, believe it. <laughs> YouTube, you can go back and watch the replays. It is for you to see. It is not happening. Not with. Not with this. Okay. 
I like Ole a lot, but Ole, I think Ole is not the man, and I've been saying this. I mean, I think a better manager would get a better outcome with this team that we have. Um, Who? We still have a style of play. You can, like, sometimes you, like, and I think we still, we, I think we kind of still struggle to break teams down, teams that, uh, um, uh, um, who, who sit back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Teams that sit back. It's, I think, and then the fact that we lost Pogba, and what we have the next two games where they're going to sit back, I think having, putting everything on Bruno, it's going to be a lot because, I mean, Bruno can't do everything, man. So you need another creative midfielder in the team that can that can make something happen. Would and you, would you put in Mata? No? Well, no. I mean, I won't put in Mata. In my opinion, I mean, Donny. I think Donny Van der Beek needs, needs to play with Bruno. But again, Ole is not going to do that. He's never, he, he's, he's never done that. So, there, I mean... I don't see it, guys. I, I don't see it. And just like Richard said, I can bet, I'll put it this way. I could bet my mortgage. I could bet my house on this. We will not, even if City slip up like five points, we still won't win it. Wow. wow. That's deep. Well, right. Okay. You. Um, th this is what I'll say. Our next games are West Brom away, Newcastle away. Kaz. What's, what do you predict on Sunday? Man United, West Brom. We're going to expect a physical game, but I fully, fully expect us to leave the Hawthorns with all the three points. Fully expect us to, to take the win. Joe, Man United, West Brom. Same thing. Uh, I expect the win if Bailly plays 3 0. If Bailly doesn't play, and it's Lindelof and uh, Maguire, probably. 2-1, 3 one, something like that. Chris, Man West Brom. Uh, oof, you know, I'm not convinced Man United are uh, going to win this game, to be honest with you. Wow. Yeah, I'm Is thinking... it the fact they're fighting relegation hey, and they're I mean... more physical? It's, it's simply because of uh, the style of play and also the coach as well. I'm thinking more of a draw. Oh, That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking more of a draw. Because Man United, they really, really struggle to break down teams. There isn't a second plan in place with this coach that we have who's um, who's coaching Man United. He, he doesn't, apart from playing on a counter-attack, if you look at the whole season, can anybody actually name me three games in which Man United are controlled from, the, from zero minutes to 90 minutes? You even struggle to name one. I think Southampton, to be fair, was one. The 9 0 game. I think that was well, 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 only because they got a red card in the first minute of the game. Jesus I mean, Christ. Oh, Why do you keep moving the goalposts? The, the, thing, the thing was to name a game where we dominate from beginning to end. Somebody calls off the, uh, uh, the Southampton well, game and well, then you well, move the goalposts saying it's because they got the red card. Well, I'm sorry. That was the game. With the, yeah, how many games that we played against, uh, with, played against 11 people and they still were able to keep us from scoring eight goals just because somebody goes down that that was up to the uh, southampton manager he fucked up he decided to oh keep yeah i've seen 10 defend i've seen 10 men defend yes Probably. 10 he men can defend that manager fucked up <laughs> all yeah, right he fucked up richard stop moving the goalposts on this guy man I'm not not saying. that's another one may not tell west brown richard I've been quite negative for this conversation, but I'm going to be positive and say, look, we're going to we're going to win this game. I think we're going to win it comfortably. We've got enough uh, attacking talent to 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 see us win it by two or more goals. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm confident for Sunday. Bams, uh, I'm not confident for Sunday, man. Oh. I, I think uh, <laughs> I'm Chris. I'm, I'm, you I'm and Chris, sorry. you exchange notes. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing they is, just love hate watching their club. No, 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 the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, I've, I've watched United so much to know kind of what is in, you know, what is going to happen. You, sometimes you know, sometimes you don't know. But against a team like, like okay, against a team like West Brom, we're, we're going to the team, like we'll go to that game as favorites to win. Mm. But again, this, this is a team that struggles to break teams down. Like, we don't, like, we struggle, and then we have a piece of the puzzle. Pogba is injured, and um, and Ole's not going to play Donny. It's only going to be Bruno. 
Um, so I mean, yeah, we. I mean, I, I mean, we probably will win, but I won't be surprised if we slip up. I won't be surprised because wow. we've done it before. I mean, we slip. I mean, Sheffield United. I mean, we we win nine nil against Southampton, and the next week we draw against Everton. So I mean, it's it's one of those games that you just don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not confident, man. I, at this point, wow. I, I I think I'll put a draw. Like wow, is it one, one or two two. Oh um, wow, just because of our defense. So well, oh, okay. So oh, some have said three points. Some have said they they're not sure. They don't know what to expect from that game. Now I'm just gonna you're just gonna tell me yes or no. Chris, title over. But you know, we're never in a title race. The the position they're yes in or right no, now, bro. No, they're, they're <laughs> not, they, ain't, they ain't no title coming. To old social to old Trafford, unfortunately. All right. Richard, title no of- trophies. Oh, real quick, Chris, no trophies either. No trophies, man. Okay, I just, <laughs> I just, I just wanted to put that on the record. Nah, it's not happening. It's not <laughs> happening. No, I'm, I'm, I, we, 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 we'll have him more. We're gonna be uh, here again in two, three weeks time after we played Newcastle and West Brom. We'll see where we are, Richard. Yeah. League okay, title so, done. Um, Title 21 is not coming and there's going to be no trophies either. So, sorry to spoil your parade, guys. It's not happening. Kaz, not happening. league title over. <laughs> I know you want a yes or no, but I'll try and make it a little bit dramatic. So, we're in the 21st century. You know, I don't course for hashtag 21. Just move to a house that's the door number is 21. So, for me, absolutely yes. Still in it. Joe? Definitely still in it. Definitely still in it. Okay. That's simple. I, I don't even know if I should even bother asking best. <laughs> wait, wait, I'll I, I, oh, just just be the drum roll. I'm I, will, I, 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 I'm just gonna give Ben the honor. Ben, just we yeah. play Chris. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, you guys know my answer. Yeah, it's it's not happening. No, I just put on record. I want to put on record since since Joe put Chris on record that we're not. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put y'all all on record. record. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dude, you owe me a bet, man. You yeah, only, yeah, yeah. It's coming. It's coming. I got you. I got you. I got you. You know what? You know what? I, I remember this few weeks ago when we bet, and I, and I, I was like, okay. And, and um, and I'm gonna bet with you again, Joe. United not gonna win the trophy this season. Not, not even FA Cup. No, nah, it's not gonna happen. Not Europa League. So you want to put a bet on that? Too? <laughs> if United, that if United, well, no, I can't. No, I can't no, say. No, I can't no, say for no, sure. United is gonna win. Just straight uh, to the point. Uh, trophy. I'm just saying, United are always going to be. Uh, United will be in a conversation. The only, the only tournament I feel United really shouldn't even attempt in any shape or form. I hope the reason why we just promoted those two youths is to play them in the Europa League. We need to get the fuck out of that shit ASAP. That there was no good that can come from that thing except for us getting injured, uh, players getting injured, and hurting our chances in the league. Get us out of there. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. UK fans, I want to thank Kaz. Kaz, tell us where we can see your, where we could watch your channel, please. Yeah, so on YouTube, uh, the Red Flex on Instagram, the Red Flex official. So you know, it's a channel that me and my brothers have started. Means a lot to us. So uh, yeah, uh, show us that support uh, and subscribe. And we've got you know a lot of decent content, more content on its way. So yeah, give us a check out. Thank, thank Chris. Richard from UK with Kaz. Thank you very much. I want to thank Houston Red Army. So glory, glory, Man United. Whichever way we see it, we take every game as it comes. We we'll see you guys. Hopefully, when uh, Sunday, Valentine's Day, can United win? You we know, know damn well. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna be at KC on Sunday. I always hope United win games. I've never said they want to lose a game, but sometimes when they don't play well, that's the result of what comes out of that game. So from all of us, Houston Red Army and the UK crew, we thank you very much for joining us. Man United are playing West Brom on Sunday and hopefully we get three points. We hope, we all hope City and Spurs, something comes out of that. We saw what they, how ruthlessly they destroyed Liverpool. That I did not see coming. I thought a 2-2 two, two yeah. draw, but wow. And that's going to give them confidence too. Don't forget yeah. that. Oh Liverpool, yeah. They destroyed the league holders. It wasn't even close. But, hey, it is what it is. So, guys, thank you very much. We'll see you guys in two weeks' time. And hopefully, we'll have more positive content from Chris and Richard and Bems that United are still in the title race. 
Hey, 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 ten years, man. Yo, yo, yo. You know what? Ole's gonna make Ole's gonna make a, a really good cocktail at the end of the season from all the tears from Bems and Chris this season. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this, happen, right? man. You know that. I'm going to make this prediction, right? I'm going to make this prediction. All right, United quickly. will not win a trophy. Well, not, I won't say win a trophy. No, that's right. United will not win a title as long as the Glazers are, are still owners of this club. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, Kaz, any last, any, last, any last thoughts? That's my prediction. And last thoughts would only be that I hope, just in relation to the game, I'll make a prediction for you as we're all in a mood for predictions and I'll make a prediction for this game. If Eric Bay starts against West Brom, we get the three points. Simple as that. Richard, last last point. Last point. We're not going anywhere under this coach. We're going to win on Sunday, but that's about it. Joe, last point. Um, we're going to win this Sunday, and we're still going to be in the Tyler Challenge until it's no longer mathematically uh, in our favor. Possible. And that's it. Chris, last points. Last point. Man, if, if I was in charge of uh, the club, I would acquire a new coach as soon as possible. <laughs> I, don't give, I, I don't give a rat's ass of, of, about them Ooh. being in second position right now. We need somebody who knows what they're doing in the position. And we currently Ooh. have somebody who doesn't have an idea. The position they, they're in right at the moment is false. So don't look at the position they're in right now because further down the line, when the season's done, that's when he'll be he'll be revealed to be more of a fraud. All right. Guys, thank you very much. UK, USA, thank you very much. We'll see you guys in two weeks' time. And hopefully and possibly, we should have more positive news. I'm Tim Ross, your host. Socats will like it. The Man United action. I've had Kaz from Red Flex, and we've had the Houston Red Army and the UK crew talking about United's talent title challenge. Some say it's over. Some say there's still a chance. Some say Everton game was the pivotal collapse of everything for United. But as football fans, we live to fight another day. I'm out of here and see you guys in two weeks' time. If you like. Peace, guys. Thanks, one. Take care.